Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango November Julian here for Off Grid Ham Radio. Today we're looking at the LEFTS, Light and Fed Sloper Antenna from Chameleon Antenna. We first saw this antenna on the channel during August of 2024 during my trip to the Arctic Circle. During that trip, I had some really good results while testing with Jan, Sierra Mike 6, Tango Whiskey Yankee, who's on the southwest coast of Sweden. Now, to be completely honest, I had some skepticism about putting this antenna in a completely sloping configuration. The first configuration I used was actually sort of an inverted L. The inverted L configuration worked really well for NVIS as well as DX, or regional communications, but it wasn't until I put it in the sloping configuration with the lefts at the top of my telescopic pole, with the wire sloping down into a tree at about an average person's height. That's when the Chameleon 4010 lefts really started to shine. The map you're looking at is from psarecorder.info. Every place you see a flag with my signal to noise ratio, that's a station which heard my station. If you see a flag plus a drop pin or a dropper, that means I heard that station and the station heard me. So that's a bi-directional contact. So during this test, I was heard in Europe, naturally, North Africa, Central America, North America, and Australia. Not bad for using an ICOM IC705 and 10 watts. Let's go ahead and put the copter in the air and show you how I have this antenna configured for this test with JS8 Call. So I'm using a slightly modified telescopic pole, the carbon fiber model from Gigaparts. I've added an additional three sections to the top of that pole to get a little bit of height for the sloping antenna configuration. So for this test, I have the apex of the sloping antenna at about eight meters or 26 and a half feet. The other end of the wire that slopes down comes down into a tree at about an average person's height. Hopefully this configuration will prevent any coupling between the carbon fiber mast and the radiating element of the infet half wave. One of the questions received most often is, is there directivity in this sloping configuration? And absolutely, but perhaps not as much as we would think. Let's take a look. Now I ran this test with FT8 on 40 meters, 20 meters, 15, 10, and six meters. My goal was to see if we could tell if the antenna favored any specific direction. Um, it was pointing south, almost directly south. Now, when I did a JS8 call test earlier on, stations in Switzerland, Austria, Italy were coming in extremely strong, and they were receiving me equally as strong. So that's an indication. Again, looking at the map, we can see, and I have to say, this isn't a very scientific test, but the higher in frequency we go, we can see more clusters to south to southeast while still getting in clusters from other parts of the globe. Moreover, the directivity became much more apparent the higher the feed point was placed on the telescopic mass. If we go back to the JS8 call map on PSK Reporter, I have quite a nice dispersal pattern around the world. I have no problems getting to Alaska, to North America, to Central America, Australia, most of Europe, and North Africa. I'm thinking now it wouldn't be a bad idea to ask Chameleon if they could make a short video that I can integrate into one of my videos explaining to us what sort of dispersal pattern we can expect on low frequencies and high frequencies alike. Anyway, so far so good with this antenna. I like the radiating pattern, uh, I like its efficiency, and I like that I can use lower power and still get out to the stations around the globe that I regularly reach. It's not bad at all. So let's go ahead and take the rig expert and see what it says about the 4010 lefts from Chameleon Antenna. Scanning. 1.41 on 40 meters, 
1.51 on 20 meters. Of course, we're at the bottom end of 20 meters. I'm sure that's going to get better if we move up a bit. On 15 meters, we've got 2.04. At 12 meters, 2.76. 11 meters, or the top end of 11 meters, bottom end of 10 meters, we've got 2.1. On 10 meters, we've got 1.23. And on 6 meters, 1.87. Let's just go for kicks and giggles. 2 meters, we've got 1.5. And at 70, oh, nothing on 70 centimeters. But this is surprising. We've got 1.08 on 160 meters. Really? We're going to have to test that out later. Ironically, I decided to do this right away. I tested FT8 on 160 meters. Now, admittedly, it's daytime. So this isn't going to be the best thing, but uh, I actually hit a station about 115 kilometers north of me, totally in VIS contact, to a station in Sweden. I'll show you the map in a second. That station was Sierra Mike 2 Gulf Hotel, India, and he's about 115 kilometers north of my station. Absolutely brilliant. Now, just to be clear, I have no illusion about the efficiency of this antenna on 160 meters. I mean, what is it, one eighth of a wavelength on 160? But uh, it's just nice to have the option of being able to use 160 if, if we can. So, NVIS contact with a very inefficient antenna on 160, that's a bonus for me. It's just a bonus. Gravy. As they say. Let's grab that antenna analyzer one more time and take a look at the SWR as well as return loss across the bands. So let's take a moment to talk about return loss and what it tells us. Return loss indicates how much power is being reflected back from the antenna due to an impedance mismatch. A higher return loss means less power is being reflected back and more power is being transmitted out or radiated out by the antenna. The lower your return loss, the more inefficient your antenna is. The higher the return loss, the more efficient your antenna is at radiating at that frequency. At the bottom of 40 meters, we have an SWR of 1.77 and we have a return loss of 11.1. In the middle of 40 meters, at 7.150, we have an SWR of 1.48 and a return loss of 14.3. At the top of 40 meters, according to the U.S. band plan, we have an SWR of 1.32 and a return loss of 17.1. On 20 meters, we have an SWR, sorry, at the bottom of 20 meters, we have an SWR of 1.53 and a return loss of 13.5 dB. In the middle of 20 meters, we have an SWR of 1.7, and we have a return loss of 11.7 dB. At the top of 20 meters, we have an SWR of 1.84, and a return loss of 10.6 dB. At the bottom of 10 meters, we have an SWR of 1.87, with a return loss of 10.4 dB. In the middle of 10 meters, we have SWR of 1.31 and a return loss of 17.4 dB. Uh, at the top of 10 meters, we have SWR of 1.4 and a return loss of 15.5 dB. Anyway, it's very nice coupling the SWR across the band along with the return losses. It gives us a better visualization of what the antenna is really doing and whether it's efficient or not. So, very good. Let's move on. Let's take a moment to look at the heartbeat I just sent out on JS8 Call. We've got Oscar November 7 X-Ray X-Ray. He gave me a report of plus zero one dB. We've got Mike Whiskey 7, Alpha Bravo Sierra, 
who gave a minus 13. We have Hotel Bravo 9, Bravo Victor, who gave a minus 5. India Uniform 2, India Tango Echo, who gave a minus 12. Uh, Golf Mike 0, Delta Hotel Delta in Scotland, who gave a plus 15. Remember, guys, I'm using the ICOM IC705. This is absolutely incredible. Then we have this old friend, Sierra Papa 5, Golf Sierra Mike in Poland. He gave a uh, zero, minus zero 07. Then we have Mike 7, Echo Victor Victor, who gave a uh, minus zero 08. But anyway, all of these are excellent signal reports. Actually, let's scroll over and look at how I'm receiving them. Mike 7, Echo Victor Victor, we gave him a minus zero 02. Uh, Sierra Papa 5, Golf Sierra Mike, we gave him a minus zero 08, so similar as he gave me. Uh, Golf Mike 0, Delta Hotel Delta, minus zero 0.5. And he's running slow mode. I believe he's using 5 or 10 watts. But that's absolutely brilliant. Anyway, um, and India Uniform 2, India Tango Echo, minus 14. And what did he give me? He gave me... Where is that station? Do, 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 do. There he is. He gave a minus 12. So, again, very similar. So... That says something about this antenna and, of course, the ICOM IC705, but doing so, so far, so good. Now, just to close down this video, I did another session about the last 12 hours, 12 to 24 hours, let's say, with FT8 and JS8 call across multiple bands. And I'm really impressed. If there was any sign of directivity... You can't see it in my configuration, but it seems to favor <laughs> the North Atlantic coast of the United States. It's uh, quite insane. But again, remember, this is just 10 watts from the IC705. And I believe, is that Texas? Wow, well, that's South Texas with 10 watts, both directions. Europe is absolutely saturated. Excellent reception for Asia, throughout Russia, Japan, Oh, I wasn't heard in South Africa, but uh, what is that, three or four stations there? Not bad. Anyway, this antenna looks like a keeper. I really like these lightweight MAM portable wire antennas. I know they're a pain to get up in the air, but uh, hey, the performance is really where it is. If I can achieve my goals with 10 watts, where I don't have to use 100 watts, uh, it saves me energy, it allows me to stay off-grid longer, and as an efficient antenna, I can maintain these repeatable results. Anyway, interesting antenna. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. I think that's just about it, guys. Look, you can find this antenna at Gigaparts in the United States. You can also find this antenna at Pileup DX in Sweden, if you're in Europe. You'll find the links for North America and Europe in the description. I think this was a great find, and I appreciate Chameleon Antenna sending it over for me to try out. All right, guys, you all know the drill. If you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please let me know by leaving me a comment, a thumbs up, or even a very special super thanks to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or somewhere where other operators will appreciate it. As always, you guys are absolutely awesome, and I appreciate each and every one of you. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.